friends, welcome back to my channel. Welcome to another video in my little pump new series that I can finally do that now that I'm gonna be getting an insulin pump. So if you are new here, I have been diabetic for 16 and a half years. I have always been on multiple daily injections until around May, June of 2020. I decided I wanted to get an insulin pump and now finally at the end of July, um, I have an appointment to get my insulin pump. But when I decided last year that I wanted to get an insulin pump, I had no idea where to start with deciding which insulin pump to get. So I thought I would make this video and share my thought process and how I researched different insulin pumps to come to the conclusion of deciding which one I wanted. And yet at the end of the video, I will share which insulin pump I'm going to be getting. But it is a really big decision deciding which insulin pump you want because depending on which country you live in, um, you do have to make that commitment for a long time. So in the UK, once you decide on an insulin pump, that pump is with you for four years. So it is worth doing a lot of research before deciding which one you're gonna go for. So the first thing that's gonna narrow down your choices is finding out which pumps are available in your area and at your diabetes clinic. Because I had no idea when I started this process that different pumps aren't available at all clinics and all clinics have their own selection of insulin pumps that they have curated based on which ones they think are the most beneficial. I actually just filmed a video all about the process of getting an insulin pump in the UK and how I managed to get mine funded. Um, I'm not sure which video is gonna go out before this, like this one or the other one that I filmed, but in that video I explain um, that, yeah, I moved partway through my deciding to get an insulin pump and the pump I thought I was gonna be getting at my original clinic, when I moved to a new clinic, it turns out that pump wasn't even available. So it's definitely worth researching which pumps are available at your clinic first. But in case you want to do any like pre-research about different pumps, the pumps that are currently approved and available in the UK are the Dana, the Dana RS, the Medtronic G 640G, the Medtronic 670G, Medtronic VO, the Omnipod, the Medtrum A6 Touch Care, the Roche AccuCheck Combo, Roche AccuCheck Insight, Roche AccuCheck Solo, the Tandem T-Slim, the Ipsomed Ipso Pump, and the Vicentra Kaleido. So if you want to do any research, those are the ones that are available in England and JDRF actually have a really helpful um, like spreadsheet of all the different insulin pumps and their different features. So if you want a quick way to like narrow down a lot of criteria, check the different fe features of different ones, I will of course leave that spreadsheet down below. But yeah, once you've found out which pumps are available at your clinic, it's worth speaking to your pump specialist and asking about the different features of all of the pumps, even the ones you think you don't want, because you never know, there may be a feature on that pump that you weren't aware of that makes you actually really want it, or a feature about a pump that you think you want, but it turns out that's not right for you, for your lifestyle, for how you manage your diabetes. Once you've done that, I think it's important to think about what one factor is the most important for you and your diabetes care. If you think about what's the main reason that pushed you to want to have a pump and what is the main thing that's going to make it necessary to fit in with your diabetes management and your lifestyle and start there. So for example, is it that you're looking for a pump that has the ability to do looping and work with a CGM? Is it your biggest concern that you want a patch pump over a tubed pump or a tubed pump over a patch pump? Do you want the pump with the biggest insulin reservoir because you're quite insulin resistant or because you use a lot of insulin every day and so you want a big reservoir? Do you want a pump that has the smallest bolus and basal increments because you're very insulin sensitive and only want to be taking very small amounts of insulin throughout the day at different points? Is it that you have a very severely fluctuating insulin sensitivity throughout the day and so you want the pump that has the most room to alter basal rates throughout the day and have different basal increments? I'd say those are a lot of the main kind of factors when thinking about an insulin pump. Think about them all, obviously, but think about what is the one that is the most important to you. There's going to be something that is an absolute necessity, and then that eliminates a large amount of the choice. So for me personally, I decided pretty early on that my one thing was going to be that I wanted a patched pump over a tube pump, because although looping was quite high up on my priorities, at the moment I'm not going to be able to loop. Because to loop, you need a CGM. I currently use the um, Libra, and that currently cannot loop with the available pumps on the market. If I had a Dexcom, on the other hand, maybe looping would be more of a priority for me, but I personally can't get funding 
for a Dexcom or any other CGM in the UK and I have loads of videos about the Libra and the Dexcom and I'll link those all below if you want to find out more about those um but yeah at the moment looping isn't realistic because I don't even have the CGM so I just kind of put that question to the side because it doesn't look like funding for a CGM is going to be readily available available to me within the next few years and I only have this pump for four years and although that does sound like a long amount of time by the end of those four years yeah maybe I can get a Dexcom but I don't think it's going to be realistically an option so then my next point was that I decided pretty early on that I wanted a patch pump because I thought it would fit in better with my active lifestyle and I do that is no that is a big decision for a lot of people deciding between those two so I did also ask over on Instagram from pump users what are the pros and cons of pumped versus tubed pumped patch versus tubed so I'm going to show, share those responses now very good point if you are looking for a patch pump it's very worth trying the Omnipod demo kit you can order them for free off of the Omnipod website and obviously I know Omnipod is not the only patch pump but it gives you a very good idea of what it's like to have a patch pump on your body and trial that out and see if that works for you. The concern I had with tubed pump as well is where to put it when you sleep um, and I had one answer here saying they use a tube pump for eight years and you get used to sleeping with it on in under a week um, so she used to sleep with it in a band that she like bought to have on her um, and now it's just loose and she doesn't even know that it's there. Um, she also said another thing I was quite concerned about was like being able to swim and be in water and she said she's never restricted with a shower or bath because it can be off for 40 minutes. The hard bit is going on holidays with a group um, and getting kind of in and out of the pool um, but in her opinion it's like the control she's achieved with her, with her diabetes is worth not sitting in the pool for hours. Lots of people here have said that tubed is uh, much easier to get used to than it first seems. And then another person on the note of swimming has said honestly the only time I felt restricted by a tubed pump is when they've gone on vacations and the pump site won't say pump site won't stay on because of the pool but in that case she just uses injections throughout those days um and then she's never felt restricted so you can obviously also take a little break from your pump as long as you keep a note of your old mdi rates um and what you need to be doing on mdi and have that equipment with you and then on the other side i had someone with an omnipod respond that omnipod is great for swimming and being in water because it is waterproof um, and also the ability with any pump just to be able to bolus by pressing a button rather than injecting is like a general pro of pumps over injections and there are also apparently um, safety measures to make sure you don't accidentally inject too much insulin which some people do get nervous about it's quite easy to make a mistake um, especially when the pump is attached to you all the time. On the other hand we have someone who had a tube pump and an omnipod and they have said um, in this instance the amount of extra stuff you have to carry day to day with an omnipod or a patch pump is a lot more than with a tubed pump so for example the omnipod cuts out after 72 hours so when that 72 hours is up you absolutely have to put a new pump on um because it will time out so if you're like out and about you have to take all of your new like inf like how i don't know all of your pump equipment with you to then put a new pump on um so you have to carry the pod, the insulin vials, ETC to change pump, whereas tubed pumps aren't timed. So you just have to carry the cannula with you because then you can do quite a quick, easy cannula change while you are on the go. So that is a, one pro of a tubed pump over a patch that um, is often overlooked according to this person. Um, but yeah, I think that's important to note that I guess if you do have a patch pump, you do have to be a lot more on it. And also in case it like falls off, I imagine they're quite a lot easier to knock off. And so you have to carry all of that equipment with you um, all of the time and then another couple of important notes on a patch pump over a tubed pump um this person has said that although it is tubeless you do still feel constantly attached to it this is the omnipod um she said it's often hard to forget the um, because of the amount of it that's actually stuck to your skin tubed pumps are also stuck to you but the actual bit that sticks to your skin is a lot smaller in comparison than the whole thing being attached to you with a patch pump and also this person's made a very good point of um she said she always speaks to a lot of people who want to go on the pump because they think it will suddenly fix issues that actually might not be down to needing a pump some people um think her pump is like an automatic cure and it definitely isn't um, there's still turbulent times especially when basal needs to fluctuate so yeah that's a very good point i did initially <laughs> go into the pump thinking like oh it's going to fix everything and i am very aware that it won't fix all of my problems with diabetes however i do think it will make a significant improvement due to my 
insulin fluctuations. And then just a few quick fire opinions. So someone said, I've actually tried both and found more freedom with a tube pump. Someone else says you get used to it pretty quick. The one downside is you have to dis disconnect a lot if you have tubing. Um, someone else says, even though it's tubed, the T-Slim with control IQ or even just basal IQ is amazing, 1000% recommend. Um, and then on the other side, someone who used to be a pump user said, very restrictive, lasted about a year and went back to pens. Um, and then, yeah, someone else says, nearly two years on a T-Slim pump, now using control IQ and barely notice it. So, I think it's really important to have all of those opinions and take them into consideration when you're deciding if a pump is even right for you, but also which kind of pump you want when it comes to patch pump versus tube pump. But I also think that it was actually really helpful for me to ask those questions, not only to receive those opinions, but also to show how everyone's diabetes management is very individual to them. And there's no one thing that works for everyone and the best thing to do is what works for you, not what you think you should be doing when it comes to your diabetes management, whether that's going low carb or eating high carb, whether that's using MDI or using a pump, whether it's using a patch pump or a tube pump, whether it's doing weight training or deciding that you want to do cardio because you think that manages your blood sugar better. Whatever you find works for you, do it and don't take anyone else's like unsolicited advice if it's working well for you. It's always good to hear other people's opinions and other people's experiences because you never know whether something else might work for you it's always good to experiment and try new things with your diabetes but if you find that something that is amazing for one person and you try it and it doesn't work for you that's fine it's not going to necessarily all the time so that's a kind of a bit of a tangent and a side note but that's just to say do what works for you do your research find out opinions but at the end of the day it's your diabetes and your body yeah thank you to everyone who sent in your opinions and like i said I was originally thinking I did want to go for a patch pump um, and then yeah, also having found out which pumps my clinic offers which are the Tandem T-Slim, the Medtronic 670G and the Roche Solo Micro Pump which is a patch pump, um, I decided that yeah the Roche Solo Micro Pump would be best for me because there's no point in me having the Tandem because I can't loop it and equally with the Medtronic um, I just preferred the idea of a patch pump, not having the tubes, especially for being such an active person, trying to find places for it um, on workout outfits. I'm already used to having this, which is actually quite big, stuck on me. I know a pump is going to be bigger, but I'm used to having things stuck to me and patch will be better for my lifestyle. So yeah, I'm going to be getting the Roche AccuCheck Solo Micro Pump, um, which I'm so excited for. And I'm not going to talk about that right now because I haven't even seen one yet. Like I literally haven't even been able to go into my clinic and look at them. Um, because of everything being virtual appointments at the moment. So the first time I see it, well, when it will be like put on my body, which is exciting. But yeah, I don't know a lot about it other than the research that I did, but I don't know how the actual user experience is. So I will of course do a review of that pump once I have been using it for a little while. Um, I'm gonna review like my first week on the pump, how the appointment goes, what the aftercare of transitioning to a pump is like, all of that. I will be vlogging, um, which I'm really excited for. I'm just so excited to get started on my pump journey. Um, but yeah, I hope this video was useful if you're wondering how to start choosing which pump. Um, that was kind of my process and it's worked really well for me. Um, asking as many opinion, asking as many people's opinions as possible, doing lots of research and also just thinking about what do I need? What is my one thing that I need? Um, so yeah, like I said, I hope this was useful. I hope you all have an amazing day and I will see you soon. Bye.